with Avengers Endgame coming out this week, I'm concluding my current slate of Marvel reviews with Avengers Infinity War. But before I get into my review, here's a little message. Before I go on, don't forget to SMASH that like button, SMASH that share button, and if you're new here, SMASH that subscribe button so you can watch more reviews like this one, and give a little tap to the gray bell icon for notifications on my latest uploads. Back to the review. Avengers Infinity War is the Russo Brothers' third outing in directing their MCU films, and this is about Thanos trying to get the Infinity Stones to complete his Infinity Gauntlet so he can wipe out half of humanity with a snap of his fingers, and of course, the Avengers have to stop him. But along the way, they get broken up, and some Avengers meet up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, this movie's pretty big, if you couldn't tell. This was one of the most hyped up superhero films in history. Probably not since Batman v Superman has a superhero film been this hyped up. Now for these reviews, I've been re-watching some of the MCU movies, and I can't help it. I think Avengers Infinity War is the best MCU movie we've gotten yet. I didn't think the Russo brothers could top what they did in Captain America the Winter Soldier, but then when they did Captain America Civil War, somehow they topped that. And now we have Infinity War, and I think the Russo brothers even topped their previous two movies. This film is incredible, and the best part of this movie, the part that I was a little bit skeptical over, was Thanos. Like, they've been hyping Thanos up this whole time, and looking over the MCU, their strongest point was not their villains. In fact, a lot of their villains just suck. The biggest criticism I have over Marvel movies is that many times their villains aren't even characters. They're just obstacles that the heroes have to overcome. Now, some people would say, oh, well, it's only because they want their heroes to have a spotlight, but you can have both. It's not an either or. Like, the Dark Knight, you know, focused on the hero and the villain, and look how that turned out. Uh, the Lion King focused on the hero and the villain, and look how that turned out. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back, look how that turned out. When you make both the hero and the villain interesting, you get better movies. There's, there's, there, you don't have to choose. But luckily, the MCU had been making better villains uh, as of recently. Like, they had, uh, what was his name, Zemo from Captain America Civil War, who I feel like was pretty underrated. Like, he was a pretty strong villain. And even then, you could also argue that Tony Stark was the villain of Civil War by the end of it. Then we had Doctor Strange, which didn't have a very strong villain. And then we had Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which had Ego the Living Planet, who I don't think was that compelling as a villain. But then, out of nowhere, Spider-Man Homecoming gives us uh, the Vulture, who was awesome! Uh, then we had Thor Ragnarok, which had not only one, but two great villains with Hela and the Grandmaster. The Grandmaster being played by the awesome Jeff Goldblum. And then we had Black Panther, which is a movie that I don't overall love. I like it, but I don't love it. But Killmonger was the best part of that film. And I think Killmonger is the second best Marvel villain, right behind Thanos from Infinity War, who completely blew everyone away. The visual effects are completely outstanding, probably some of the greatest motion capture we've ever seen in a film. And Josh Brolin's performance really allows this character to really shine. And as I said before, Thanos is the main character of this film. And even from a storytelling perspective, that kind of makes sense. This movie has so many different characters, like you have Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, uh, what was it, Black Widow, you had Scarlet Witch, you had Vision, you had Spider-Man, you had Doctor Strange, you had, uh, let's see, Star-Lord, Drax, I'm, I'm already out of fingers, so how do you balance all that out? Making the villain the main character, and this works because we've seen these, uh, heroes in their movies, like, we've seen them change, we've seen them you know, all fleshed out. So using this as an opportunity to make the villain the main character actually does a lot to balance out all the other characters because it's like, who's going to be the main character out of all these heroes? They're not. It's the villain, Thanos. And Thanos' motivation to wipe out half of humanity really makes a lot of sense. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but you can at least understand where he's coming from. 
And the way they write Thanos' motivation as to why he would want to snap out half of humanity, it's done so well. You can completely understand why he would feel that way. Again, it's not the right way to feel. It... No, it, like, don't do that. But... It's made very clear through the really amazing writing, the incredible visual effects that bring Thanos to life, along with Josh Brolin's performance, that really do make Thanos such a compelling character, and one of my favorite MCU characters in general. And the heroes aren't obstacles to the villain in this film, because they as well have a lot of screen time. It just so happens that Thanos has the most. And I gotta preface this, the visual effects in this film are absolutely amazing. There are so many shots that to this day look awe-inspiring. First Man won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects over Avengers Infinity War, and really, I could go either way. Avengers Infinity War had really great techniques in, you know, big blockbuster visual effects, but at the same time, First Man used its visual effects in a more subtle way. Like, there was still some CGI, but they also included lots of managers and stuff, Either way, if either Avengers Infinity War 1 or First Man, I would have been completely satisfied. Then again, with the entire lineup of Best Visual Effects nominees we had this year at the Oscars, really, this was one of the best years for visual effects ever. And another thing I loved about this movie was that there were consequences. There, like, really, really dark stuff happens in this movie. And I'm not gonna spoil it, even though, really... With the marketing for Endgame, everyone knows what happens in this movie. But just in case you've somehow not figured it out, I won't say. All I will say is that when certain things happen in this movie, it left an impact. I was like, oh god. Yeah, that happened. And I really can't believe this movie actually paid off. Like, I was expecting this to be great, but I wasn't expecting Infinity War to be the best Marvel movie we've seen yet. And now that makes me a little bit worried for Endgame because the Russo brothers have a track record of always trumping their previous MCU movies. Um, I, I, I don't know what Endgame's gonna do. But whatever the case, yeah, I totally recommend watching Avengers Infinity War if you have somehow not watched it already. It is absolutely amazing. I love Avengers Infinity War. And as you saw in my top 10 best movies of 2018, I thought it was the second best. First being Black Klansman, but you should watch that too. And before I do my outro, I'm going to be releasing this bit of news. My review for Avengers Endgame... Hopefully, if nothing goes wrong, we'll be up on Friday morning. This this Friday, Friday morning. I'm not going to do a premiere because, you know, I want to get this up as soon as I can. And yeah, I won't be able to interact with you guys during it. But you can just leave it down in the comments below. And, uh, you know, yeah, we can have some discussions. I'm not going to do any spoilers for Avengers Endgame, just so you know. I'm not going to spoil Avengers Endgame. It will be a completely spoiler-free review. So, yeah, just so we recap. Uh, Friday morning, I don't know what exact time, but Friday morning, I will post my review for Avengers Endgame. There's going to be no spoilers. Now that you have that all down, uh, you know, whenever you get the chance, check out that review uh, and look out for it. So yeah, what do you think of Avengers Infinity War? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like. Share the video so we can share it circulated. Don't forget to support my Patreon on my Patreon page. Or if you can't do that, then consider supporting me through my PayPal donation button in the description below. And if you want to see more, click this.